Hello, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K-I-C-K, -K. we are live. So you can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. So let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This right here, this is where any highlights from the, the stream will be. We also got the Patreon. Uh, we just finished Misfits. And we finished Peep Show. Uh, we started Sherlock last Friday, so a, a Friday episode is coming up again. We voted on Line of Duty. Line of Duty is locked in to replace Misfits. And now we just got to replace something with Peep Show. We're actually doing the voting now. So, you know, it's a vibe. Don't forget we got the Discord as well. Uh, any links are down in the description below. This is... Uh, the Taboo Room. Prince Dre reveals what King Von was like and what's Oblock like. Traplor, Traplor Ross. Well, I don't know why that's in the title. What'd you put? Ah, you're trying to get in the algorithm. I get you. I got it. Got it now. Never mind. I got it. Prince Dre, I never really heard of him. Like, I heard, like, I seen, I think I seen him. It, like it was Vaughn, like a clip of Vaughn before, and then I might have looked him up. Like I might have looked up one of his songs or something. And then since then, that was like three years ago. Since then, I ain't me personally. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Let's check it out. Man. I remember he used to have braces though. Anyway, no pauses. I'm a school in like eighth grade. You know, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, on the southeast side. I was born in Woodline, 64 of College Grove, moved to 79th East End. Then after that, I went to 71st when my mama first got her own little apartment. Then we was there for like two years. Um, and what was school like for you growing up in Chicago? S school. Was was dude was the the dude that do taboo room? Did 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 Prince Dre fly to London or the UK or something? School it, it was fun, but towards like I'm say, boom, I went to school and grammar school, elementary school. I I don't know people calling different things. Uh, so I was I went to school with the people like you probably hear like LBG no other sets that I was cool with. So, what's up? First, we was cool. Then, people start, you know, we getting older, we choose what size we with. Then, once people start choosing their size, that's like high school. It's like when you mature. So, then Shit, now cool. we're in two with each other, because boom, they on that side, we on this side. That's not true. That's not the real reason, though. I don't believe that, that we've heard we've heard this story a thousand times of why the GDs and the BDs start beefing in Chicago, while O Block and Tuka will reveal start beefing. We know it already. It's over a female. Then y'all start, you know, everybody was cool at one point, right? This is what we all know to be factual. We've heard it from both sides. Then something happened with a female. Then if all the beef started. It trickled down from there. Right, but this stuff that been going on from way far time with people. Oh, well, yeah, of course. They from it when they growing up. So growing up in school, it was it was dangerous to it. It, it, it wasn't, it'd probably be dangerous to other people. But me and my life online, looking back, I'm, it was dangerous. <laughs> I was getting shot at going to school, all type of stuff. When you say you should get shot, how old was you at this stage? Twelve. Around that time, probably like, man, I was getting shot at in grammar school in like eighth grade, seventh grade. Twelve. How old are you in seventh, eighth grade? In this question? Probably like twelve. So you was getting shot at at twelve years old. My, my best friend, he got killed in eighth grade. He was twelve years old. Yeah, he got killed. Been in drive by. What was the circumstances? So that's life in Chicago, but it's like the South Side and the East Side. 
even some of the West Side, it's like they're not advancing with the rest of the city. You know what I'm saying? They just like because I feel like everybody is every every project building that was ever torn down, everybody just went over there. So like they definitely don't got the same opportunities. Everybody out there robbing, stealing, shooting, killing. You know what I'm saying? The North Side was just bad before too, but you know. They wasn't having that over on the north side. Oh, literally, he was walking home or? Nah, nah, nah. My was, bad. It's my last pause. Ago, he, was, he was chilling in the, in the hood. He was just chilling there. Whoever well, they came to, and they, they, they shot at him, and they killed him. He got hit in the head and twelve. And, and when that happened, did that change your mindset at all? Around that time. Stay strapped. <laughs> I, ain't gonna lie, I was I was really young in, so it just made me like fuck life. Like I, 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 I before I was rapping anything, I thought I wasn't gonna make it out at them times. I really wasn't keen. I was doing drugs at them young ages, pop pills, smoke. At twelve. Yeah, twelve, thirteen. Yeah. So I guess prior to losing your friend? Did you have aspirations of wanting to do other things, Oak? Me. Around that time, really my best friend, he wanted to make me rap. Because cause he was doing like writing in school. Just, they was playing with it. So it made, I'm, I'm like, man, I could do that. Then, I was just playing at the time though. So when, when Chief Keith, when Chief Keith blew up, that's really when I pushed into it. Like, dang, if he did, he come from where I'm from. Yeah, Chief Keep gave the whole city hope. <laughs> every every slum, every hood, every pocket in the city where nobody had anything, like young, like he gave people hope. Like, oh man, people been like me can really go out here and rap and get it. I can do it too. That's why Chief Keith is a legend in the city. I don't care what nobody says. He's legend dairy. <laughs> Then what was you doing when you were like <clears> twelve? <throat> so after eighth, ninth grade, what was you doing? Was you still in school at that age? Yeah, I, I went to school until my tenth grade year. And how old is tenth grade here? What? Wait, fifteen, sixteen. So you dropped grade. out of school at that age, and then and what, then what did you go to do with your life? After that, I just was rapping. I was on the road with dirt. I was, I really was on the road by myself. I was just popping up the cities wherever he was at. Cause my name was was like ring around that time. And then touching back, how would you say it was growing up in South Chicago as a child? Chicago is a gangster city. That's what we know from, from like Al Capone, the Larry Hoover, Jeff Ward, King David. So, like, I my my grandparents and daddy and mama was in the streets. So that's a fact. That's really how I be in Chicago. Even in the, some of the suburbs, like, it's just everybody was a gangbanger at some point. Like, my mom, my uncle, my uncles. Uh, it's really from my mom's side of the family. Like, they was thugging. <laughs> it was thugging out here. They was black pea stones from my west. It's tough. I just was, I was around it young, like, riding with my daddy. Outside my mama, so like I was born into it. So gr growing up in Chicago it was like normal. It, it, well, what we thought was normal, but very so normal. Like, everywhere, same thing going on. But what make us different in Chicago is we all gangs. It's like basically what gangs started at Chicago. You got gangs in California, but then the gangs that's in Chicago and California spread it out across the the United States. Um, why do you think South Chicago has such a violent reputation? Um, why do you think South Chicago has such a violent reputation? My name is Tyler Devereaux. I'm inviting you to attend my... No thanks, Tyler. Salute, though. As they say that Southside starting, that's where the most violent is shootings, killers. And is that, is that definitely the case? 
from the statistics, yeah. Then yes. <laughs> and how dangerous would you say old block is? Old block to me. It's old. Old block, I mean, it's really like normal to me. It's normal. It's normal because I travel, so I, I go places, I go to- Bro, teeth is blinding. I ain't even gonna lie. Whatever toothpaste he used, leave it in the comments or something like that. What, that must, the teeth is crazy. Uh, I go to dangerous cities, ooh, murder caps. So everything really the same to me is really, everybody living the same lifestyle. So it's like no different from nowhere else. Everybody in tour with each other, everybody killing, everybody dying somewhere else. Just like probably in London, and killing out there. It just every, everywhere is the same. Just how, it just how the government and new people put us in these positions to go against each other. As well, um, what are people's opinion, just touching on the music there, of UK drill from coming from Chicago? Because of the... My opinion on it? Yeah, yeah, because I feel like drill music was invented in Chicago and now it's pretty much gone global. No, you don't feel like it. You know that. Really, really, drill. My, my, my first song that pushed me up was from somebody in the UK. He made the beat for me. Oh man, what's bro name? Anything. As well, going back. London always had that sound though, but he's super young, so he's younger. So it's like when he says somebody from the UK made the beat, makes sense because he's young. Chicago. Um, why is Chicago sometimes referred to as Chirac? Because the violence, it was once upon a time, the, the murder rate was higher than Iraq, like the war out there. So. That's why they nicknamed it Chirac, because of violence and the people that was dying, then the people that was in the war, actual war in Iraq, the numbers was way more than that. So that's how the Chirac come about. Um, as well, touching back to your school life, um, do you reckon if your best friend wasn't killed at 12, you, you still would have gone the direction that you did in regards to gang life shootings? Yes. If it wasn't for rapping, I think I, I'd uh, be dead or in jail for it, for it. Rapping really saved my life. I can truly say that if I'm, even though I'm not at that point, like a Jay-Z or something, uh, the big ups, rapping really saved my life. For real, for real. And that's that's what the, the YouTube police don't be seeing, or the police that be shutting down, taking down videos. Like, this is, this is really changing people's life. <laughs> Like, like, Lee, like, they could really, like, you cut down, you cut down somebody's music, that's their hard work. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, if an artist puts a video on YouTube and it gets taken down, they heart drop. Because that's hours of hard work sometimes. That's money that they put into it. That's, that's, that's like, oh, man, this gonna get me out of the hood and you just revoke that chance. It's tough. And you really think you'd be dead now or potentially in jail if there's not, if you didn't get into music? Well, if I didn't get into music, yeah. What's the most extraordinary or unusual thing you've witnessed in South Chicago or Old Block itself? I witnessed so much stuff, man. I don't even know. Crazy thing, man, I was, when I was young, I did, I seen, I seen the nigga come out the street. He come out the street. Block the street, you know, like how at like a block party, how the the car turned to block out the street, and I seen him hop out of the car. <laughs> he getting that, he did what he did. That was some crazy stuff. Too. I was young. <laughs> he can't even put it all the way out there. So, so he blocked off the street, yeah. and then he got out the car, and, and he then, did what he did. And what did he do? He did what he did. He started doing what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna say what he did, but he did what he did. That. How do residents of Old Block or South Chicago feel about tourists visiting? Hey! What's going on, y'all? <laughs> it just really depends on how they come about. Because with things going on in, in the world, That's a fact. people and tour and stuff. That's a fact. You, know, you really don't know, like, Chicago is a spooky place, man, when you live there. 
and you know what's going on around you. Like it, it could get it, it, it keep you on your toes. So if somebody coming to the Von mural, I can I understand what sixty third and them what they be doing over there. Oh, like if somebody be if they come over there, don't nobody know you, and you pull up, they gonna be on your car. First of all, they gonna oh yeah, who is that? Get on, bro. Get on, bro. Who is that? Like, cause they don't know you. They at war. They don't know you, so it makes sense for them to do that. It makes sense it's for high. me too that they do that. Like, you can't come to somebody hood that's in a war and act like you ain't gotta. You ain't gotta play it like how you gotta play it. You get what I'm saying? They come about how they approach themselves, man. But they know some. It's all about how you approach them. There's a set of GDs and vice lords in East London. For real? So just like me, I go places by myself. No, I don't mean. Hold on, man. My camera. Okay. Hey, man, know these people. But me, I approach the situation, and they get the feeling out of me. They, they really adapt to me. If Olivia caught a taxi by herself to South Chicago, Old Block, what would happen? Like like a re regular lady? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wait, wh what caught. happened? What would happen? They really had... What was the question? Dapped him. If Olivia caught a taxi by herself to South Chicago, Old Block, what would happen? Like like a re regular lady? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she would be good. It just really depending on how she coming about. All of, almost how you are, how you'll be judged. It just, it just, it's about how you is. It's, you stand yourself. Uh, if you say like, because she, 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 her skin tone white. So nine times out of ten, they gonna think this a fan, or they gonna think this a police. Facts. So if you black, nine times out of ten, they gonna think you a fan, or you somebody that I'm supposed to be older. Double facts. So it just, it just all about how they approach the situation. As well, can you explain the meaning behind the gang signs that people throw? Like so you telling me there's GDs, vice lords, and four corner hustlers in North in East London. Those are three Chicago gangs. That's tough. Obviously, we haven't. We obviously see all these things that are happening um, in the UK, but it's almost the case, I guess, in this country, people can be killed for throwing up certain gestures with their hands. Yeah, but nowadays people don't go out there, out to gang, the gang signs. People do, nowadays it's just a lot of people's signs be the same thing, so you really don't know what nobody throwing up. It ain't like how it used to be like with GD, BD, Stone, Vice Lord, Crip Blood, shit like that. That's probably still going on in like Cali and stuff, but. This generation, they don't care about none of that. Roblox. And when you say GDs, BDs, what would they be? Because my viewers may not have any any idea with what that is. Now, now it's different names, but then people know as gangster disciples, black disciples. I wanted to know if you watched Real Trap Law's recent video that he made on King Von, and what are your thoughts on it? I didn't see it, but I, I heard about it. What did you hear? That they were trying to make it seem like he this and that. What was he like? Because obviously, you what, know. What was he like? Yeah, yeah. Man, he was a good artist. He was a, he was mad man, man. How, how he was on the internet. And he was, to me, like, obvious. To, to, you, to your girl, you a different person than what you'll be to with your friends. So that's that's what everybody everybody not the same. But they, they got the same attention, but they just not the same. Like more with your girl you'll be more softer, but with other people you'll be more harder. But with me though, he was he was him, he was he was I ain't gonna say he was soft, but he was a good hard person. <laughs> and as well, uh, when he did pass away, where was you, um, and how did that affect you? I was around. It still hurt. It still hurt right now. Yeah. It's, it's all, all the losses still hurt.
even before him, after him, they all hurt. How old are you, Troy? Me, I'm 27. And how many friends have you lost? Oh, I don't know. I lost no, I lost count. I ain't gonna lie to you. I lost a lot. I lost count. <laughs> Bit of a deep question, I guess, with your background, um, would you say you're afraid to die? Originality is overrated. Want to cook some? No, it's not. Originality is not overrated. Then, like 12 and that, no, nah, I wasn't scared to die. Now that I got kids, I'm scared to die. That's a fact. Man, when you rolling around doing that dumb shit, you don't be caring. But as soon as you have a kid, it be it be over with. You see, I'm gone. It's goodbye. <laughs> it matters now. And do you feel like your your whole perception of that life? It, it ain't it ain't that I'm scared to die. It's just I don't know what will happen if I leave my kids. Right. So I'm, I'm just scared to leave my people alone. <laughs> yes. And um, what are people's perception in? Chicago, South Chicago, of people in London? Because we always have this impression that I guess people in Chicago often think people in London are a bit soft and sweet. I promise you, before I even turned on the, the camera, I had no perception. Somebody asked me that on stream, I think. Like, what did you think of uh, UK people before you? Like, I had no perception. <laughs> nothing. Literally nothing until I stumbled across. And I was like, oh, okay. For sure. Is that still the case? Was that mis that perception changed? Uh, I I ain't never heard that London was soft and sweet. Just the way y'all talk is more politer than what we talk. But I understand the difference because I'm a person that study and pay attention to everything. So our education was taken from us from like slavery and stuff. So in London, they, 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 the way they talk is, is regular English. But us, we got messed up in English because we come from, you got people from London, you got people from Mexico, you got, you got people from all these different places and they come and they don't have education because they were took from us. So I don't think that y'all saw, I just think Y'all just talk different. And then the way y'all laws is different from my laws. America made off guns. London can't have guns. But y'all dangerous because y'all got swords and knives and stuff. <laughs> hey, why do you say swords first? Hey. That, a bird that's is funny. more scared to stab somebody than to shoot somebody. Is it that's a fact, because you I always said when you stabbing somebody, you gotta be built different. Cause that's a different type of you a different type of dude if you do that type of thing. Not I don't condone it, YouTube. I'm just saying. Any stabbings in Chicago at all? There's some. Me, I stab somebody. I ain't gonna lie to you. For me, but people, people scared. You, you probably they they hear more of like Mexicans doing stabs. Yeah, facts. Other than that, me, I don't care about the style. <laughs> And I just wanted to talk about, I guess, gang culture in general. Like, to the average person, is it, it, it? I guess it's almost shocking that because people are born two hundred meters that way, that I guess you've got you're going to grow up hating that person. But it, it, it and it is that don't you think that's a bit? It's just, I guess yeah, to the average person, that's crazy. But I guess when you're in it, it's it's different. Like like you're saying like. You this close to somebody. Yeah, and just because he lives there, you now have a problem with him. Now nah, problem. The way the way it is is not really like 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 again, we come from America. <laughs> America was taught wrong. We was taught to hate each other. It's just like even in Africa, right? They was you got the black people that was selling the slaves to the people, to the to the Europeans and stuff. 
Prince Dre, Freak Woke. So there's really no difference. I don't know where he's going with this right now. Because it was going on like black people against black people. Like, how is they selling their own people for money? So basically, here, yeah, we still in a in a trap, even though we, we don't know that we still got them in us. Probably niggas ain't from Africa, but most some people is from Africa. They still got like their heritage ancestry in them. <laughs> so, boom. It's in you to go against your own people still because it was been going on way before your time. Then we just... I'll let you know after this video. As hell on top of each other and come from projects and this. They broke up the projects and put everybody on these blocks. Now you you was just in tour with them. I mean, you just in tour with them in the projects. Now you on the same block. <laughs> well, you probably on this block and they on that block. Now you trying to figure out how you gonna get some money because you're not in the projects on session they no more. So they like crowds in the bucket, like the New Orleans saying. <laughs> now they fighting each other because they want this territory for their money. It was going on way before my time. It was way before my mom and daddy time, just how it was set up. Do you think, do you think that'll ever change? Do you see an end to the violence in Salem? I don't think violence will never change. I don't think it won't be no killing without a killer. <laughs> and but almost, don't you think the pitch is a little bit bigger? So it's almost like people are kept in these blocks, in these environments. Um, like I feel like it's the, yeah, it's almost the government's doing why people are, are still in these environments. Like there's not much help. Because. Let me speak my truth right now. <laughs> like, like, yes, there is a bigger picture. But if you can't see that picture, then there is no bigger picture. It's people in Chicago or people wherever they're from that have never left their, however big their neighborhood is, they've never left it. Ever. I know people that have never left California. I know people that have never left Chicago. I know people that have never left their block. <laughs> like, so, like when, you, when you brought up like that, that there is no bigger picture. Especially when there's no big homies or nobody around you telling you, hey, get out here, like, go try this, go try this, go try that. How? You know what I'm saying? What was the second thing? In these environments, like, there's not much help. I mean, because they may say, like, racism over with. Oh, man, it ain't over with. It's still going. That's why they got us like this, because they want us out their way. Like, for instance, right? They don't really care about us killing each other in these in, in, in these neighborhoods. Facts. That's why there's but so many cold cases. I mean, in their environment, that's when they gonna make it public and try to get you quicker than. For instance, right? If you kill somebody in the hood, nine times out of ten, you gonna beat that case because they really not caring about the case. But if you go to their territory. They gonna come get you quicker than the suburbs. That's crazy. So it's almost like you're. That is a fact. That is a factual statement. If you do anything in the city, they really like eh, eh. But if you go to the north suburbs, south suburbs, west suburbs, and do that same, and if you have that same energy, oh yeah, you're you're getting booked that night. Over the weekend, you going to court. You getting locked up the next week, then your court case is probably the same week, and then you getting sentenced the next week. You're out of there. <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> Say good night. <laughs> Life's worth nothing, I guess, in safe because there'll be no hard investigation into finding what's happened. Yeah, so it's just set up like this. A lot of people don't understand that because they just stuck, still stuck in the trap. And that's a shame, man. It's literally a trap. It's a mental trap. They first they 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 trap you mentally, then they put you between some blocks to trap you, and you really don't you know you good within them blocks. You don't really go venture out unless you know find unless you find you a little female that's from somewhere else, and she take you out and she show you something different. That's really how I be going. Do you reckon that's ever ever gonna change, or do you reckon that that's gonna be the 
I don't, I don't think it's going to ever change because a lot of people not waking up. Can't wake up. As well, um, Dre, what would you say is probably the biggest regret of your life? What if I told you for just a dog? Just like government aid, government aid, section eight, or any of those things, you know, kept it kept the man, it kept families, single households, it kept women in the household with their kids without a man because you couldn't get section eight, you could not get help from the government if there was a two parent household. So the man had to leave, the woman stayed with the kids, and they got government aid. It was more beneficiary. For you to be a single mother than to have a full household. It's part of the trap. <laughs> I think it's almost still like that. I don't really, I don't really got no regrets. I, I think I think life a lesson. I think everything happened for a reason, just a lesson to learn from. What's the biggest lesson you've learned from so far? Well, that's the biggest lesson I learned. To stay me. <laughs> that's the biggest, to stay yourself. Because a lot of people don't be themselves. That's how they get eaten. <laughs> the biggest lesson I learned is, is, is people are only for you when it benefits you. It's the biggest lesson I learned. It, that, that don't change, period. No matter where you go in real life, IRL, if you can't benefit this one person, they're not really going to rock with you. If somebody can't see the benefit in you, for what? <laughs> Damn, for what? There's no point to be around. And that's a tough cookie to swallow. There's no more genuineness out here. For real, a lot of people going to be they self. That's the biggest lesson I learned to stay myself. And what would you say is the worst memory of your life? The worst memory? Why am I blurry? I don't know. I don't know. Because every memory that's bad feel the same. <laughs> what would you say is the best memory? The best memory? The hell? I don't know, I got to spend time with my kids together. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I got a lot of good memories. Pro, where, where do you see yourself in five years' time? In five years? Five years, I'll be. I see myself living comfortable. But why did, you want, why did you move out of Chicago? Why did I move out of Chicago? Because I know if I'm in Chicago still, I'm gonna be stuck in the same thing. I'm just gonna get pulled in. So it's ba you it's, it's really like you have to leave from where you're from to make it. That, that's it, it just to stay focused. I ain't gonna say that's what you gotta leave to make it. You gotta leave, like put yourself in a say you in I don't know because it's different for other people. So no, no, it's not. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? I think what he about to say is, Chicago, you're going to, you're going to, even if you're on to something in Chicago, even if you're bettering yourself, but you still hang around them same people, that pool, even though you see a better opportunity, the pool of the streets and that, 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 that other stuff you used to do, that stuff was fun. Hanging out in the streets, going to parties, Toting guns to a Chicago dude, that's fun. And that pool is way stronger than even, even the greatest opportunity you see. You can throw it all away. You see Job Morant, right? Like, I don't want I hate to use bro as an example. That man has a $200 million NBA deal. All the endorsements that he can have. But the pool of the hood is just is just way stronger. <laughs> and if you don't if you're not around the right people, if you're not around the right environment, it'll get you. That's why you gotta relocate. You gotta relocate so you don't know nobody. You know what I'm saying? More opportunity, you can focus. 
Lock in. So most people that go to jail, they away from the streets. So basically they're away from Chicago. So that like helped them, the isolation like really helped them See? figure out life. Like I gotta get up out of here. But then sometimes there's other people that be like, still do the same dumb shit. So basically it's just like a- When I was in Chicago, it was like a cloud was over me. I couldn't escape the cloud that was over me. No matter what I did, no matter what motion I had, I could not escape that cloud. I had to leave. Like, it's almost depressing. Like, damn, I got to go outside with this big ass pistol on me every day. Like, I got to do this. <laughs> like, this crazy. I can't walk my daughter to the corner store. Like, what? Because there's a war outside my front door every day. Like, I, I, I can't even. This is too much. <laughs> it really started hitting me when I had a child, though. Before I had a child, it was, man, eh, I'm going to be Before I had a child, I was like, I don't really care. If I got to blow this pistol, it's going to just, it's just going to have to do be done. Like, the, but like, man, you get to thinking when you got a kid, like, yo, if I leave this earth, what's going to happen to my child? Like, who's going to take care of my child? Everybody says when you, oh, I love your child. Oh, you got godparents. They're supposed to be there. They feel, No, everybody got their own thing going on. And just because my world ends, my life ends, I don't want my daughter's world to end. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to stay alive. It's as simple as that. And relocate. The violence is everywhere. But the chances of violence happening to a Chicago person that's from Chicago. And, and you know, living in these socially or economically challenged areas. It's a lot higher. Isolation for me to stay focused. And if you had one wish as well, Dre, what would that be? If I had one wish, I would wish for a hundred billion dollars. <laughs> Without worries. <laughs> and how different do you think your life would have been if you didn't move out of Chicago? How different it would be? So if you, if you, never, if you never left? Yeah. I'll tell you, I'd probably still be in a trap. <laughs> I, I still got to keep coming because I got to feel that, feel it, feel my vibe to keep me focused. I ain't got to feel shit. I'm out of there. <laughs> I ain't got to go back for what? What the fuck? <laughs> That's why I, I go places because it's, it's almost like mo it, it, it motivation. Like I still got to go here to get the push. Like everybody go through like hard times and everybody go through emotional states. So for me, when I go to like hoods and stuff, I'm, you probably like, man, this man crazy going to uh, murder caps by himself. No, it was really on just getting the, the, the love and seeing it and it just pushed me like, I gotta get out of there. Everywhere you've been, all these men. See, that's the difference though. I, I I was I was I had love in Chicago for sure, but it wasn't enough love to make me stay. It wasn't enough love. I would never choose the rack over my daughter. Never in life. <laughs> Goodbye. You get me? My love is coming from the UK, and I can get that love remotely from anywhere. So goodbye. <laughs> At the Capitals. The UK saved my life. Thank you. Yeah. Where would you say, out of all the locations, is the most violent place that you have been? Chicago. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I, the New Orleans culture. Mm, the most yeah. different is coach I ever seen in my life. That's true. I guess that's why I love it because it's it's 
It's like their own world. And mm. like, those people really fucked up. <laughs> um, yeah, so tell me about New Orleans. I, I, I love New Orleans. <laughs> it's, it's the coaches, the them people really, them people really in the bucket. <laughs> Crabs in the bucket, they really in the drown and trying to get out. They just, they stuck, they stuck in their ways. They, I don't know, is it? I, I, I love it because it's like motivation. It do seem like, if I don't know if any of y'all ever been to New Orleans, it feel like it's a whole different world. It don't even feel like a part of the USA. <laughs> Talk to me about your chain. Chain. I got this from King Von, my brother. <laughs> what would you say that means to you? To me? I mean, I mean, it, it, it's, it's basically like all I got. Well, I know, I know, bro, with me all the time, but this, this Tim, like he with me. And when you get, when you meet, I guess fans, they ever ask for a picture with the chain. <laughs> hey, my, what did he say? What did Taboo just say? When you meet, I guess fans, they ever ask for a picture with the chain. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I had an old block chain, if I was from out there, if I was Dre, or if I was anybody that had an old block chain and a fan asked me, hey, can you take your chain off and put it on me and I take a picture with it, I might slap him. What kind of question is that? <laughs> like, I look at him like, bro, are you dumb? I'm like, no. Hey, my little cousin, my family, you know. They were... Yeah, family, but not, you know. <laughs> let me see the chain, let me see the chain. Kids, they were like, let me see the chain. But other than that, I ain't gonna let nobody else do that though. <laughs> but kids though, yeah. And, and what kind of message, I guess, would you give to that next generation? Because I feel like if anyone can change the next generation, have some sort of influence, Ooh, it'd be the cute. older generation like yourself. So what kind of things would you be telling these 18 year olds, 17 year olds who are now, I guess, going through what you did 10 years ago? I don't know because... That's annoying. Everybody not the same. Everybody don't think the same. <laughs> That's something that I learned. Everybody do not think the same. So I can tell a kid, man, look, stay. Well, anybody I talk to or touch, they they go, they grow. They they listen to me. But but they gotta be. They gotta know me to, to listen to me. So I tell the kids like, stay focused. Just stay focused. Don't fall into the trap. We all fail from, most of us all fail from the trap. So I, I just tell kids, just keep going. Just stay focused in school. Whatever you want to do in life, stay focused on it. Because you only get one life. Once that's gone, you ain't coming back. So that's, that's what I tell kids. Just stay focused. Don't fall into the trap. Yeah, so tell me, I guess, how this... The, the gang violence has changed from, I guess, 15, 10 years ago to now with when you have, I guess, social media. Because in the UK as well, when people kill people, it's often glorified now as well and it's promoted heavily. Like it'll be everywhere on social media. Um, yeah, I guess, how has that changed over time? Then, like, you got... Back then, it was real, like, powerful people, like, people that had millions of dollars be before, like, it's, it's people that, that had millions of dollars that you don't know about because they wasn't on social media. And it's, it's people that was, like, the biggest killers, but you won't know about it because it wasn't glorified on the Internet. They don't talk about it. But now they got the Internet, you see everything somebody doing. Somebody want that 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 name. They want to be bigger than the person they hear. Like they want to be bigger than Big Meech. People want to be bigger. I think than somewhere along the line, some the plot was lost. There's a lot of artists like before this generation that was faking it until they was making it. It was talking about stuff they wasn't really about. They was they was glorifying stuff, and then the people coming up listening to them like, oh okay, 
Shoot, I'm really living this life. I'm really living that life. Or let me go really live that life and try to get on rapping now. I think that's where the plot was lost. And then you got the people that was fake, fake living a life that was rapping about it. Fake living a life that was rapping about it. Moving into the new generation with these people who was not, that are living a life. And trying to get on. And now they glorify and they really rapping about what they're really doing in real life. And it's just a trickling down effect, man. I don't know. I don't know what I was getting at. But it sounded good in my head. And then and then people, so this generation feel like you got to go to social media. You got to show this. You got to glorify. You got to. Me, I'm I'm a person. I I come from gangsters. Like, man, that I'm not a loud person. You would never know what I did or didn't do, or you won't know because I'm not gonna glorify that. I'm not gonna incriminate myself and lose my life because I'm putting it out there in the world to see. That's just dumb. <laughs> This generation is dumb. <laughs> there you go, in a nutshell. And what would you say? Because uh, in the UK in particular as well, um, drill music is often, I guess, demonized, like it's, it's evil. Um, yeah, in the UK, I would say drill music is considered not a good thing by the masses because it often promotes violence. Um, do you reckon that is the case? With the impact of my business and income, my retirement. I'm going to lie, Taboo thugging with the inserts. Man, that's, that's here too. Like, people say that drill music is devil and all that. But the people that are saying it is the people that put us in this situation to, to go through trauma, fight against each other. Like, we don't, we don't, as a whole, we, we don't know nothing because we were put in this situation. But do you, do you think drill music does promote violence? I don't think drill music promotes violence. Well, the way drill drill music was started from people just telling their life and they and their story. That's just, that's how that's how we blew up off it because we were just rapping regular day life. We we never knew what it was doing to the people and to keep took off and never knew what the industry would do when they found out that that sells the industry would bring somebody in turn them into a drill rapper that ain't a drill rapper yeah just talk about this man whatever talk about it or people realizing oh this gets you in remember uh what's the dude the white dude the jesus what's his name white slim jesus remember him Example A. And like I was I was rapping, I wasn't doing it because I'm like, I'm finna talk about this. I just was rapping because I like dang, he did, I can do it. I could tell my story. I could tell the was I can tell my story. Cause we all got stories right here. People do it now because they like they was doing it, but they thought we was just doing it for that, but we was people really was going through this stuff. So, so now, like, it's a lot of people that don't even be on that now. See? And then, that's why I, I leave niggas be dying too quick, because they don't really know how to move before they even start talking about this and that. Man, how could you talk about this and that? You got a job. You, you got it. Like, I learned my lesson. Like, going to school and getting shot at and took things. Man, how the fuck is we in tour? Nigga, we going to school. You think we can't get caught going to school? We think I'm gonna go work at McDonald's and get caught leaving at McDonald's? You think I'm gonna know? So. Mm hmm. A dude I was acquainted with died like that. He was involved. He had a nine to five. They drove past, seen him at his nine to five, spent the block, killed him at his nine to five. That's why gangsters can't have no nine to five. 
You just got to be a gangster full time if that's the life you're choosing. It, coming back to Chicago, whenever you do come back, um, is there still certain areas that you can't go, or do you feel free to go anywhere in Chicago? R.I.P. Chicago, you like? Man, it's, it's really like it's everywhere, everywhere. Not just Chicago, it's the places that it's just about how you move and how you how you come about with the situation. We really can go anywhere we want to go. Because my understanding is that. Old Block's office is mainly 63rd. So could you walk through 63rd without no consequences? Could I do it? Yeah, yeah. At this and now, in this stage in your life? No, nah, because if I'm just walking, just walking, they go, oh, they go such such, get them. No, I can't, I'm not going, I'm not going to do no dumb ass shit like that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. But. That is not, okay, I guess it is crazy to the average, but nah. Just because you're on a different path of life, that don't mean your past has changed. They still want you even more now. Oh, you think you're just going to give your life to God? <laughs> well, go meet him. <laughs> That's really what they be on, low key. <laughs> At the same time, would I go? Yeah, like I I can do whatever yeah, I want to do, but would I do that? Do a dumb move like that? No, I ain't doing that. Because I feel like the, the people who I've spoken to in Chicago, the, the older demographic, I guess, have the same impression as you in the sense that, um, I guess, they're not really trying to promote that kind of lifestyle anymore. Like, it's almost like you're they're trying to change the narrative to some degree. Like, it, it shouldn't be shootings, it shouldn't be killings, which I guess is strange because I guess the 18, 19 year olds coming up now, they're, they're constantly just promoting everything. The, 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 the lyrics, especially in the UK. With the older generation now that used to rap like that, they understand the plot. That was messing up their money. So they trying to backtrack it and walk it down so people will see like, oh, okay, he changed it. Let's book him now, book him for this, book him for that. Now their pocket books are back open. When you listen to Drill Art Issue in 19, 20, 21, it's very self-incriminating. Um, see, see, me, I, I ain't no hypocrite. I can't say stop the violence, I'm still talking about violence. <laughs> Do you think your lyrics would influence again the next generation? See that that that's how I come about. I'm trying to influence. I'm trying to tell you this shit ain't right. <laughs> this shit is not what you think. You can lose your life like that. That shit take two one zero seconds, man. That's how I come about. I ain't finna tell you, man. I go kill them people. No, I want you to go make it out. We're about a surprise, Erica. And then answer. W kick ad, we still skipping it, doesn't matter. You get me. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's just how I am. I want you to make it out. I don't want it to keep going with younger people. I want you to make it out too. But I also want you to be living reality. Be, 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 know what's, know what's around you. And know what you got to do. But also stay focused on your future. That's crazy. That's a crazy statement. I just let me just. You, I got kids growing up. <laughs> you think I want them to fall into the trap? Nah. When you say that, fall into the trap, what does that mean? You already explained fall it, didn't you? Trap. Be stuck in. <laughs> what my what my dog say say uh. <laughs> Environmental trap. Hey, is it is it is it uh, cringy when I say you get me? <laughs> so basically, in the property trap of of what the government set out, they they set the trap out with the cheese, and they want us to all fall in, and we all fell in. <laughs> I don't want the kids to grow up to be high. What well, we did or seen. As, as well, Dre, talk to me about Chicago slang. Because since I've been here, everyone keeps saying bet. Bet. Oh, I've never had that. <laughs> oh, he's in Chicago. Mr. the Taboo Room. Hey, I hope you get some good interviews while you, or or did get some good interviews. Uh, unless you're having a bet in the shop as a gamble. Hey, bet me, like, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, like if I, if you be like, I'm, I'm on such and such street, and I tell you, I bet. I mean, just okay. Um, yeah, it just means okay. I mean, all right. I use that word a lot. 
I know whoever's watches my channel or I use bet. A, I think that's one of that's the top three words in my vocabulary is bet. Basically, okay, cool. Yeah, it's like, okay. And I think, is it backdoor? I think Wayne sent me a message saying that's what backdoor means. Backdoor? Backdoor just basically means... Set up. A snake. It's really and truly, I, my first time hearing backdoor was in St. Louis. Uh, just a quick one as well. On St. Louis, probably there. St. Louis? St. Louis. St. Louis wild too. East St. Louis is wild too. They've been busting too. Yeah. They've been on murder rate since back then in the 80s, 90s. St. Louis, another place where it's, that, that was, I used to be there a lot too. A bit bad. All these murder capitals seem to have the same thing in common, that everyone there is black. Damn, yeah. tap. That's because everybody is still in the trap. We is all in the trap. It's no different from a O block. It's no different from a Magnolia, no Calio, no, you know, these projects, no Cabrini Green, these blocks. Is, we is no different from nobody else. We all stuck in the trap. And I guess you're glad that you've made it out. Truly, I, I ain't out, but I'm put out. <laughs> yeah. It's a good little interview, man. It's all right. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. I'm done.